What's up students? This is your boy Philly Golden Teacher. Today's class is going to be an intro to agar and how to germinate mycelium from a spore print to agar aka pimping spores. Since it's so easy peasy I even added a nice bedtime story for you as a bonus so stay tuned. But first here's a list of tools and materials that you'll need. You can pause the video and take a picture if you want. Number one you want a blade your spore print steel air box your agar cups or petri dish 70 percent isopropyl alcohol some type of flame source some steady hands with gloves and a face mask is recommended prior to this point i went ahead and wiped down my steel air box with some alcohol to sanitize it as best as i can today i'll be using some of my favorite spores here to demonstrate the process so I go ahead and uh, open up your spore print. Actually, before we do that, we want to get our uh, agar cups ready. So I'll go ahead and unlatch the lid off of these just gently to make it easier to uh, work with them. All right, the next step here, we're going to go ahead and flame sterilize our lead. This will ensure that we kill any type of bacteria or contamination. I'll go ahead and heat this up until it turns red hot. I want to make sure to do this outside of the steel air box. If you have any alcohol fumes inside the box, you might end up igniting it and burning some hair off of your forearms. So please don't do that. Remember, safety is our number one priority. With that out of the way, we'll go ahead and open up our spore print now. Finally, be very careful and be very gentle. You want to avoid as much air movement as possible. You want to keep things very, very clean and neat. This is the best way to prevent contamination from spreading all over the place. There's the sport print. Be very careful here. Don't touch the spore print directly. I've gone ahead and made a little tiny crease on the side here. Then I'll go ahead and scrape some spores off with the flame sterilized blade here. And you want just a little bit of specks to drop onto your agar. You don't want to overdo it. You just want just a little, just a few specks is plenty enough. Each one of those little specks that you see will have hundreds of little microscopic spores in there. So you got plenty. You don't need very much at all. So once we scrape it in, close it up immediately. I also try to minimize the amount of time that the agar is exposed to air while the lid is open. So I try to do this very quickly and then close it back up again just to ensure that the space in there is clean as possible. All right, with that out of the way, that's, that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and close up the lids here. Fold up the spore print. You can put that away, store it for another day if you want. Once you have a set of spore prints, once set of spore print can last you for almost an infinite amount of growth cycles for this type of variety. Here's a closer look at the agar cups. You can see the little specks in there. You really don't need a lot. Just a little bit. And here's the other one. A couple specks here and there and you are good. And that's it. Very easy. Bedtime romance story. Here's what happens when you drop spores on the agar. What happens in the microscopic world is two spores, mommy spore and daddy spore, meet together in the agar plate. Mushroom romance happened. They got married, did the honeymoon thing, and afterwards, they made a baby called mycelium. You would think mommy and daddy spore would make a baby spore, but no, that's wrong. Mushrooms are freak of nature, they're just weird, so they make mycelium. 
the mycelium will consume nutrients around itself and self-replicate its DNA out like a diddle. And once there's enough mycelium growth, you can cut out some of it and grow more mycelium baby. That's the process of germinating spores on agar. Once mycelium colonizes enough and it's ready to fruit, it's going to create a pinhead. This is what's considered a baby mushroom. Baby mushroom becomes adult mushroom and you harvest them. The end. Alright, back to our cups. We keep these cups on a shelf at room temperature and here's how they look five days later. You can see signs of mycelium. Sometimes it takes a little longer than that. You just gotta be patient sometimes. Once the little mycelium gets a hold of some food, that joint will start colonizing pretty quickly. Here's how they are seven days later. Now John has picked up some momentum and is now starting to take over that sweet, sweet, delicious agar. Now 10 days later, it's almost filled up the entire dish. At this point, we'd be ready to make transfers to new dishes. We're going to assume our spore prints are not 100% clean and there's a good chance Contam may have traveled along with them. If you notice any signs of Contam starting to grow and there's mycelium, the sooner you transfer, the better the chance of saving that mycelium you have. That's it for this video. In the next one, I'll show you how to make transfers and clean up the mycelium from contamination and we'll get them ready for spawning to grains. Shout outs to this month's Patreon supporters, Jeffrey K, Kayla W, Jeffrey S, Brock T, Fibonacci, KCW, The King of Spores, Alex M, Rigi, Gil K, Samuel S, Brandon W, John D, Jimmy S, BigLuowParty.com, Alex N, and last but not least, Bill. Thank you to these amazing people for supporting the PGT team. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the content, please hit the like button. Leave comments below and subscribe for more videos. If you want to discuss and learn more about mushrooms and mycology, come join us over on the Discord server. And if you want to show some support by becoming a golden student, you can check out my Patreon. All links will be in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video.